Good evening, everyone. System Chalk here with the 196th episode of Book of Hours, our first run through YouTube, playing as the artist. And I think this is the first full episode since we have opened the last of the rooms. So there was something I think I was trying a little bit earlier, um, but I... I think... Um, actually, I'll be honest with you, too. It's not that long since I recorded the last episode, but it's been long enough that I, I sort of forgot the overall plan. I know one thing I was working on was investigating the various pieces of art throughout the house. And then I was also going to be reading as many of the books as I can. Um, I do have a list of skills that I was working with, but again, one of the things that I feel a little uncertain about is just the fact that I don't have Hyksos. So A Child's Treasury of Golden Afternoons is not currently accessible to me. And then on top of that, uh, we do have a couple of remaining texts, which would be The Ascendant and The Book of Maya. And both of those are um, short. Now, we do have an option that allows us to force Numa if it comes down to it. I am less inclined to take that, um, but we will, we'll see. Um, I, I will, I'm not closing off the possibility completely. I'm just a little reluctant to do so at the moment. All right, Oriflams, established 1776, Sense, Signs, Sciences. Dear librarian, we would like to offer you this opportunity to purchase... We have the 12 Letters on Consequence, Julian Cosley's Epistolatory Treatise on What May Come After, addressed to his once friend, Claude Hersault, of the Mystic and Antiquarian. This will give me Putrefactions and Calcinations. That, in turn, gives me... All right, that's a pretty straightforward one for us to follow up on. So we will we'll definitely buy the book. It only costs us two tally price anyway. Um, now, I think what I will do here, we're going to get started with Crow Cross Sands. Take a long walk along the ocean side. If I know what to look for, I might find something the ocean has forsaken. Uh, I'm going to skip uh, bringing Mrs. Kill in for today, I think. I've already got a full picture, so I think I'm going to hold, uh, hold off of getting a new... A new one. Um, so yeah, I think today we're going to be focused on books. So what I'll do as well, I'll keep the tryst. So I want the tryst, the health. Sorry. Um, let's say moon, uh, moon rose, and heart are the ones that I want to keep aside. Now, for texts that I could read, we did the Focus of Amber, so we're now on to Unhatched Hymns. Now, we've read this one a couple of times before, but I want to be consistent in terms of how I approach, uh, approach this. This is one that's in Sabazine. I've already mastered this, but I could reread it and perhaps recall a memory. And then we will also take the time to investigate some of the art in the house. So we did see the Foundation of the Sun. Uh, actually, you know what? Sorry, we were following up on the the different um, the different statues. Now, I will confess, I actually forget what Sister said, so we're going to start with that, and then we'll work our way up. Um, we'll see the paintings. Uh, we'll spend some time in this room for sure. These are all Brian Levinson's works. And I guess maybe we'll take a quick look at the Regensburg room. Now, there was one other thing that I wanted to consider here. So there was something that I thought about is mostly just related to this blank. And I'm wondering if there's something about the anthropoderm parchment. I'll put an earthquake name just for the sake of, of exploration here. Yeah, the only other thing I could think of would be the... Um, well, actually, I guess my journal technically counts as... No, that's readable, not writable. Hang on. Shouldn't my journal be writable? Um, I guess blank. Uh, and then it's the winter one. <coughs> yeah. Uh, 
So I thought something. I thought this one seems to be the most re uh, relevant to the carapace cross. So I was like, okay, well maybe there's something that I can do there, and we'll do a little bit of a focus on um, scale. I don't think there's any kind of blank that uh, that counts as a scale, or um, I suppose the alternative would be heart. But that was really the best that I had going for me there. Now, with that in mind, that was just sort of me working with... Um, that was just kind of me working with something, you know, I, I, just a, a hint of an idea that I had, basically. There's, there's nothing... There's not a lot of... Um, oh, actually, sorry, there is one. Uh, Hound's Gall, I guess, would be a little bit more scaly, too. Uh, I think we have some of that. I don't know if it'll make the dif uh, difference, but I'll feel better if I... If I just put my... My curiosity to rest on that. So I'll, I'll explain a little bit of the, um, I guess, silliness, for lack of a better term, behind sort of this reasoning. Um, and again, I mean, I can apply the earthquake name, but that doesn't really mean a whole lot. Um, so I think there's something worth, like, recognizing uh, out of that. But on the other hand, that same intuition tells me that maybe I should be able to do something at the Spire Prospect. And I haven't really been able to find anything out of that either. So what I would do in this case here, you know, um, I had been sort of sitting on a hunch for a while in terms of... I can't remember if it was this... It, actually, I don't think it was the inscribed stone. I think it actually had something to do with the edicts. Um, and then eventually we wound up getting a book that sort of cracked that open. So that's one reason why I like reviewing the books here. Um, but definitely... It's, it's one of these cases where I haven't been able to bring it all together in terms of my own understanding of the game. And of course, this is inevitably when people want to come in and say how it works. But the fun for me is that, you know, even though I feel quite comfortable with the game and assuming that there is, in fact, something there, you know, to me, uh, what's really rewarding about this is that I always have the option of looking this stuff up. It's not that hard to go into the game and see how it works. Um, but a game that I've got this much time in um, is one where I still at least feel that there is the potential for me to uncover new things. And so, you know, obviously this is, it's nice, um, even though of course we're looking forward to some more, um, I guess the only other thing I could say would be if there was something specific about the old moment, but again, I'm trying to see where the, the reasoning uh, works there. <coughs> I'm really cranking. This, by the way, also is not how we've traditionally found um, the uh, the secrets of the house, right? It normally it's just been sufficient to add the element of the soul, or sorry, the skill, and uh, I don't think it's even needed an element of the soul. But I think that's what I've got. So the logic here behind the old moment is it just seems to be a little bit more related to the Carapace Cross, so I wanted to try and uh, overload it in terms of Carapace Cross references. Um, but again, um, I could be chasing something completely irrelevant here, um, which is, you know, why I wanted to take the time to test it. Uh, and like I said, you know, I, I, do, I do sort of like the fact that there's enough mysteries left in the game for me to sort of at least feel like there's more for me to investigate. Uh, and if it turns out that, you know, I've just been wasting my time, well, that's fine, because again, part of part of it is just the impression, um, which is valuable to me. And, uh, sorry, I should have probably been making some money here. There's not much work on offer in Brand Crew, but I can find six pence worth of odd jobs. Um, but, you know, we've got, uh, we've got a few months until House of Light, so even, you know, even before any DLCs come out, I do kind of like the fact that uh, this approach, at least, has allowed me to, um, you know, get a bit more out of the game. 
Okay, sister, priestess, oracle, queen, the very uh, a very old image from the dawn period with a simple inscription. Before the suppression bureau, before the curia of the isle, before the dewolfs, before the church, the sisters of the knot were here. Almost a hundred generations have lived and died since this thing was shaped. Now I can um, restore an element of the soul right away, and I will do that. And then I would like to continue reading. So we've got Lady Rowena. Investigate the object. You won't use this up or consume it by doing this. Pour it out. So today is really just a matter of... Um, it's really just a matter of reading books and... Uh, trying out crow cross sands if it feels like we have a few days in a row that are like this i might change things up a little bit i might try some crafting uh, i do know one secret of the house which i haven't picked up yet but i'm less inclined to do that right now simply because we do have a new book on the way unhatched hymns hymns attributed to saint lucia the eyeless patron of glass workers and name of the hour called menisgate the hymns venerate every sanctioned hour, celebrating them as the sun undivided, but also suggesting that each hour may become the next, madrigad to watchman, watchman to wolf, and so on. The hymn of the phases celebrates the menisgate from whom we do not turn, for the truth which is beauty, the beauty which is truth, and the most perfect balance between the two. The hymn of the reflections, more puzzlingly, celebrates the menisgate as the sister of Janus, mother of shadow, whose visage wondrous and emptiness can reveal all truths. So Savage Hymn, a, a, maybe, sorry, sorry, a music that urges valor and violence. All right, I'll use the metal to investigate the next one. So that's going to be Glimmerings. An anonymous prison diary written by a dreamer convicted of oniric irresponsibility and confined to the Cucurbits. Lady Rowena, for as long as there has been a hush house, there have been stories of its enigmatic protectress. A Henry Moore piece, perhaps a genuine one. Moore did speak very cautiously of an encounter with a pale commission. I can't recall if in this playthrough we have encountered uh, Lady Rowena or not, but you do get a chance to meet this person if you want. Investigate this object. As I used to say in my youth, the day is done and so am I, but I've earned my pay. Now, I'm going to take a second here and just see with putrefactions and calcinations, I would want moon or winter. So we still have some moon left, uh, left around. I'll bring back the Faust in this case. Tuppence will buy me a hearty meal and a quiet place where I can rest and gather my thoughts. It is autumn when the leaves rustle. The silent landlady has served me apple pie with steamed cream in the window nook. Eastern salt snared stuff. Need more storage. Okay, so we do still want to go to the uh, beach as much as we can. Lady de Braus, uh, sometimes known affectionately as the First Ava, Lady de Braus was never, uh, never visited the Isle, but it was her generous endowment that allowed the Abbey to thrive and grow in the 13th century. Why did Ava de Braus, the widow of a marcher lord from much further north, take such an interest in St. Brendan's? There are stories. All right, now if I want to, um, if I want to interact with this book once I get it. I suppose I technically don't need um, I technically don't need the moon uh, seeing as I have a skill that will allow me. Yeah, okay. 
Uh, I'll still use Abbot Jeffrey in this case, though. Well, actually, no, I'm going to hang on to the Wist, actually, because that can you that can be used to level up the um, the skill. So let's investigate Abbot Jeffrey with the Wist. Investigate the object. You won't use this up or consume it by doing this. Sorry, I, sh I meant the other way around. I wanted to keep the Wist and then use a core instead, but that's fine. I'll I'll make sure that I keep the Trist for other purposes. So we'll use the core and the health before we use anything else. Now one reason why I feel okay not bringing in um, Mrs. Kill for any supplement uh, in terms of just you know being able to get uh, get memories or something like that we have enough in terms of you know being able to go to the sweet bones or something like that uh, just to be able to earn a uh, an element of the soul and be able to read the book and it's an it doesn't take that much if it's putrefactions and calcinations then it's really just two two memories we need i deserved a little quiet time okay so with that in mind let's bring that uh whist back Okay, and a book's done. So, Glimmerings, an anonymous prison diary written by a dreamer convicted of an ir irresponsibility and confined to the Cougarbit. The prisoner is plainly terrified and bewildered by their situation and has been unable to wrangle a coherent explanation out of anyone, but the dreams keep coming, they keep writing them down. Snow, broken mirrors, half-heard sky music, flowers of white, red, and black, a blood-streaked winter dawn. The most notorious signifiers of aniric risk, fantastically vivid and detailed. No wonder they were locked up. Their final recorded dream is of a worm jewel beneath Brankrug Isle, which they open with a key carved from their finger bone. And of course, that was one that led us towards a, um, a, treasure, a treasure of the house. So we'll keep reading. We'll get the same... Um, we'll get the same uh, bittersweet certainty, but that's fine. So the Black Book of Brittany, a volume of ink lore. Abbot Geoffrey. It was Abbot Geoffrey who gave Natan of Regensburg sanctuary here and decreed the building of the Barber's Tower where Natan and his family could dwell. In 15th century England, only a determined and well-respected abbot could have persuaded the brothers to shelter a Jewish physician. The bust is carved from Hazelwood. The night before Natan's arrival at the Isle, Abbot Geoffrey recorded a certain prophetic dream. There is an old tradition in this country concerning the prophetic virtues of Hazel. Perhaps none of these things are related. Okay, so we'd, I'd still want to try and push ahead in terms of investigating things. So we've taken care of all of the busts in this room. We technically have not seen the uh, images yet. I also forgot to renew the water. And we did use up the pitcher, so in this case we will use the core to drop the water. Lower the bucket, creaking into the dark. Better now. Okay, let's, um... I'll earn money one more time at the Sweet Bones. Pour it out. We should have just enough time to be able to read the book. Leaves in the Wind, a soothing but undistinguished work in oils. Someone evidently was good at trees and wanted you to know it. In the foreground, an odd curl of shadow might just be a hand reaching from a crevice in a yew tree trunk. I'm reluctant to give up the tryst here, so we're going to try uh, health with Crowcross Sands at high tide. Mm. 
We'll start reading this book right away, so in 12 seconds we'll go to the reading room. Oriflams thanks you for your custom. Okay, moon assemblance. We just need, what was it? It's four, so we just need three. In fact, putrefactions and calcinations is... Oh, am I wrong? Right, sorry, it gives me two. I could add the lunar globe, but no need to get clever. Moon, a culmination. I can master this mystery. All right. More Ava's locks. Not the easiest for me to place at this point. Don't want to cover up too much of the wine, but incidentally, do we have any more of the, um, no. The Black Book of Brittany, a volume of Inklor gifted to St. Brendan's by Brian of Brittany, who was made Earl of Cornwall after the Norman Conquest. The black flower lies heavy, but the roots of the watchman's tree run deep. They may not be hidden forever. The black flower, spoken of as a doom or geese, can be held at bay with the last ink of power, brewed from the pale mixture in the presence of sufficient winter with the arts of containment. So of course we know how to make uh, Nilicant. Now I don't want to use up the Trist right now, so in this case we're just going to stay put. Hexans at high tide, a gloomy study of the sea in gloomy weather. Barely visible at the painting's edge, there are floating timbers that suggest a wrecked fishing boat. We will be getting some elements of the soul before too long, um, but I don't want to... I don't want to mess up the opportunity to do something with the tryst. An afternoon spent profitably reading newspapers to the curious, writing affectionate letters for the lonely, steering farmers through the requirements of the Ministry of Agriculture. Might have been a better idea for me to try and restore the uh, whist, if, now that I think of it. Now I will uh, sort of show how you can get one of the special hirelings, but what I wanted to make sure was um, anything that was sort of a priority was handled first. So that means doing things like going to Crow Cross Sands and, you know, just basically I want to try and get, um, I want to try and get some things done first before I, you know, I do f fun stuff, for lack of a better term. Uh, I still feel okay doing this because we now have the Wist to work with. A little water splashes on the stones of the well to nourish the mosses there. be nice for me to just have a game plan. Um, okay, so if I want to improve putrefactions and calcinations, I have a bittersweet certainty. Now let's say the worst the worst hap worst case scenario happens and I don't have anything else. I suppose in that case I would use the old wound and we would get it uh, get it back. So what I'm thinking of here would be if the book I was uh, currently reading doesn't have um, let's say that it gives a bittersweet certainty, you know, just as an example. Um, how would I, how would I make sure that I'm still able to uh, level up the, 
the skill that I'll be getting. All right, the boy prays. Might have been nice to read a book, but I figure I'll get through the art. Actually, what might have been an interesting choice would be if I uh, brought back an element of this. Or so I, I read a book, brought back an element of the soul at the Sweet Bones. And then as the last act for the day, spent the 30 seconds looking at the art. But that's fine. That's not a major concern. All right. The boy prays. There's no sign of a boy in this distorted, menacing image, and no one seems to be praying. In the darkness gathering at the back, a crowd of eyes might suggest a pack of hounds. So the last step is just to wait for the book. Night has fallen, dawn will come soon. The twelve letters of con sorry, the twelve letters on consequence, Julian Cosley epistolatory treatise on what may come after, addressed to his once friend Claude Hersault, the mystic and antiquarian. By the time he wrote these letters, Cosley was identified with the Onirio political worms movement, and Hersault with the birds, meaning roughly that Hersault held the order of the hours to be desirable, and Cosley held it to be oppressive. Many of Cosley's arguments about the consequence and finality sorry, many of Cosley's arguments about consequence and finality are couched in erudite and practical alchemical terms. Others appear to be thinly veiled threats directed at Hersault. Some are both. Okay, so we have a regret. That means we should be able to level up putrefactions and calcinations without any trouble. And I'll find... I actually don't remember where my regret pile is. There's hindsight. Oh dear. We need more space for our regrets. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. figure I'll just save myself the the trouble. I, I'm sure there is a more systematic way that I can redo the library, but right now I'm okay uh, swapping, swapping out shelves where it seems to make sense. this a little bit so that we can make it look nice.
And then, of course, we've got the a little bit more information in terms of the birds and words di uh, worms division, although I'm not sure. I don't really think we've quite... Um, I don't think that's been a mystery for us. I feel we've dis uh, discussed that before. Uh, one thing I will say for myself, I don't have a a solid grounding... Or I don't have, like, a solid basis for this, but... I have wondered if at least part of what the ordering of the hours and and sort of the 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 way the histories interact and so on, uh, I do wonder if there is something about the idea that <clears throat> um, the current order of things um, is what makes it so that there are five histories, and that I wonder if the the worms faction. Um, Specifically, you know, the the um, the Aaron Peel lectures are kind of what I'm um, I'm letting sort of drive my thinking on this. But I'm wondering if there is something something about the fact that the um, you know the current order is what prevents the the secret histories from sort of flying off into an infinite number of uh, divergent or contradictory histories and that um, essentially the the worms faction would actually find that to be a good thing um, so essentially you know like the I, multiverses are definitely something that comes up a lot in a lot of the fiction we've been doing lately i think uh, devs actually does an interesting uh, take on that so i just want a second to take some water But I wouldn't feel strongly enough about this hypothesis to like sit down and contribute to the wiki on it or something like that. But it is whenever I, I hear about those factions and sort of the way that the world of this game is divided, it is something that makes me think a little bit like and say it's like, okay, is there evidence for or against this particular rendering of their ideas? Um and of course, that's why we read and reread the books. Now we're—I think we've—we're done for today. Let's do a quick review of what we're up to. So we finished *Glimmerings* and *Black Book of Brittany*. We're going to have uh, one more painting to look at. That's going to be *Leaves in the*. Actually, we've already looked at *Leaves in the Wind*, so we can move up and look at these more substantial paintings. Uh, we've already got what we needed from the book, so really for the rest of autumn, uh, we may want to consider trying to build some more memories. I think we are about due for a Numa. Um, but really the main focus is going to be uh, exploring the house, and again, in this case, it's going to be a more specific um, look at the house's art. I am going to do my best to continue to go to Crow Cross Sands and try and get a particular item that I think would be helpful. And then... I did say I was going to be reading left to right, so we've dealt with the library and the bridge. I'm going to make an exception on the left to right thing. I'm not going to bother reading these texts which house Newman because, of course, we're going to be reading those quite a bit already. And I guess what I'll do here is, again, we're we're reading it like, um, at least you read English, which would be left to right, up and down. So I think we'll start in the Severn Chamber, move down to the Westcott Room, the Reading Room, and then we will read uh, the Long Tower and the Watchman's Tower first floor uh, is going to be the order in which we read things. Obviously, it's going to take us a while, but these are mostly salt texts. So we've read, uh, we've actually read quite a bit of that already. But all of that will be for the future. So thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.